This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I'm at the Pushkin Museum, right downtown Moscow, Russia, standing in front of a wonderful reliquary, which once held the bones of somebody very important. The bones aren't there today, but once it really was a reliquary for someone's bones. But look at the way this reliquary is decorated. It's covered with apostles. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, the Apostle John, the Apostle Andrew, actually all of the apostles decorate this reliquary. But it's so interesting that if you study the New Testament, you find that more than 12 apostles are named. There were 12 original apostles, but if you dig a little deeper, you find there were a lot of people in the New Testament who were called apostles. Do you know how many people in the New Testament are called apostles? Do you know who's called the first apostle? We're told in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1 that Jesus is the first apostle. And he called others to be apostles with him. And beyond that, there were additional apostles of the church who were dispatched to lay the foundation of the church in places where it had never existed before. And in today's program, we're going to be seeing how many people in the New Testament are actually called apostles. When I was growing up, our particular denomination believed that there were only 12 and at the end of those 12, there were no more legendary men called apostles. But when you study the pages of the Bible, you discover there are quite a few people in the pages of the New Testament who really are called apostles. And today, we're going to identify who they are, and it's going to be good. But first, I want you to watch this. God sends apostles and prophets to his church as messengers with special insight and revelation. So why is there so much controversy, error, and abuse concerning these ministry gifts? In Rick Renner's foundational new book, Apostles and Prophets, Rick reveals how these responsibilities in the church must operate and teaches you how to define and identify correct and false teaching. It is really imperative that we understand the vision for the church as it's laid out in the New Testament and that we understand the roles of prophets and apostles and how they are to function in the church in these last days. This beautifully bound 750 page book is the definitive study available on Apostles and Prophets. Through its detailed information and illustration, Apostles and Prophets allows you to explore and imagine what it was like in the early church. Call now to get Apostles and Prophets for just $30 or go to renner.org. Don't miss this special offer. My friends, I really want to encourage you to order your copy of Apostles and Prophets, their roles in the past, the present, and the last days. The back of the book says, what and who are apostles and prophets? What is their critical role in the end time church? And do you know why I wrote this book? Let me give you an illustration. In the early 90s, it seemed there was a spiritual warfare mania in the body of Christ. Everyone was talking about the devil and about spiritual warfare, and some of it was good, and some of it was really, really bad. And I was so grieved by the bad teaching that I was hearing that I began to pray, and the Holy Spirit began to impress on my heart that I needed to write a book to help bring balance to the subject of spiritual weaponry and spiritual warfare. And I began to write a book which turned out to be called Dressed to Kill. I wrote this in the early 90s to do my part to bring balance to people on the subject of spiritual warfare and spiritual weaponry. I did not know when I wrote this book that it would become a go-to book on this subject. And today, this book is used in Bible schools. It's used in seminaries. It is read by people all over the world. It's been distributed by millions of copies. Well, in recent years, people have been talking about apostles and prophets. Some of it's good, and some of it is just pure nonsense. And once again, 
I begin to feel the Holy Spirit impressing me. Rick, you need to help bring a balance to this subject. So I said to Denise, I'm going to write a book called Apostles and Prophets, and we're going to base it on what the Bible says, the historical usage of the word apostle and prophet, an intellectual approach and a spiritual approach. We're going to put it all together. And I said to Denise, I don't know that I really have much to say on this subject, but my friend, I guess I had a lot to say because this book is more than 750 pages and it is fully illustrated. You will be amazed when you get your hands on this book. And I really believe it's going to be the go-to book on the subject of apostleship and prophetic ministry. We need to know what the Bible says on this subject because today a lot of people are calling themselves apostles and prophets who are not. And I'm absolutely convinced they do it sincerely because they don't really understand what the word apostle means. There hasn't been much teaching on this subject. And it seems so many people today are calling themselves prophets who are not. And again, I believe they're sincere. They just don't understand really what prophetic ministry is. So we need to know what is an apostle and what is a prophet? What was their role in the past, in the present, and in the last days? And today I'm going to be teaching from this book. But hey, we're offering you the series by the same title, Apostles and Prophets, and it comes with a wonderful study guide. You can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. We're a ministry that really prays for our friends and our partners. And if you'll reach out to us by calling us, or sending us an email or a letter. The moment we hear from you, we're going to pray. And Jesus is really going to do something spectacular for you. But yesterday, we talked about the big problem that emerges when you've got bad theology and a misuse of important theological terms. It just makes a mess for everyone. And it seems that currently we've got a mess when it comes to the names, apostles, and prophets. So today we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. And in today's program, we're going to see what an apostle is not. What an apostle is not. Now, eventually we're going to get to the subject of prophets. But right now we're talking about apostles. And today we're going to see what an apostle is not. And I want to ask you, do you know what the word apostle means? Now, we briefly covered this yesterday, but I feel the need to begin there again today. If Christians today were asked to provide a description of what an apostle is, most would probably say, hmm, an apostle is someone who is a leader. Or somebody might say, an apostle is a person that's done something new, innovative, and pioneering. Or occasionally somebody might even answer, an apostle is someone who starts churches. And as we saw yesterday, even though that last answer comes a little closer to the truth, it's a very oversimplistic statement about what an apostle is. And these answers that people provide tell us people really don't have a clue about what an apostle is or what an apostle does. Most people would partly correctly say an apostle is someone who starts churches. But even that answer is not complete. It's not complete. And to illustrate how insufficient that answer is, let me ask you, how many people do you personally know that have started churches? You may know a lot of people that have started churches. Well, does merely starting a church mean a person is an apostle? If the answer is simply that an apostle is someone who starts churches, then there must be a lot of apostles in the body of Christ today. But that's not the case. That is not the case. So there must be more to the word apostle than the superficial answer that an apostle is someone who starts churches, even though starting churches is a part of what an apostle does. And church leaders around the world reputable people who've taught on the subject of apostleship have expressed to me personally that they've often felt frustrated by their inability to articulate what an apostle is and what he does. They all agree that simply saying apostles are sent ones who start churches feels like a shallow answer. And it is a shallow answer dissatisfied and feeling that surely there must be more to the word apostle than simply saying that apostles start churches, these leaders know that their answers are 
insufficient, yet they often don't know what else to say on the matter. And I believe this is a result of a lack of serious teaching and information on a very important topic. For centuries and centuries, the subject of apostleship wasn't deemed important, it wasn't deemed necessary, and therefore people just don't know what the word apostle means or what an apostle really does. But to show you how much confusion there is in general, even today, about fivefold ministry gifts, let me tell you about a particular event I was at where I was just stunned by something that I saw. And it occurred in a conference some years ago at a very dynamic meeting. It was not a fivefold ministry conference, it was just people attending a church. And the speaker who preceded me at that conference asked the crowd, now listen to this. How many of you here today are called into the fivefold ministry? Now remember, this was not a pastoral conference. This was not a ministerial conference. This was just a big church. And he said, how many of you here today are called into the fivefold ministry? So I turned around to see how many hands were raised. And to my amazement, it looked like 80 to 90% of the crowd raised their hands to say they were called to be either an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, or one of the fivefold ministry gifts. And I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who raised their hand, and this was not a ministerial meeting. It was just a regular church conference. So my friends, I'm going to tell you categorically, Listen to me very clearly. Some people will like this. Some people will not. But I'm going to tell you very categorically that everyone is not called into the fivefold ministry and that the gifts of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor and teacher are much rarer, rarer than the large conglomeration of people who today call themselves by these names or who are incorrectly called these names by people who misuse the terms to describe them. And the overuse, please hear this, the overuse of fivefold ministry names has given the incorrect impression that these fivefold gifts can be found in large doses in the church and it has led people to believe they can be self-titled and self-called. And the result is, the result is the awe, the respect, and the weightiness that Christ intends for these authentic gifts to possess among us has been degraded. It's been degraded. You know that that's the truth. But it's important. It's important to note that a person can be apostolic and not be an apostle. A person can be prophetic and not be a prophet. A person can have a heart for the lost but not be an evangelist. A person can have a pastoral heart, but not be a pastor. A person can have a great love for teaching the Word of God, but not be a fivefold ministry teacher. For example, listen, many have an apostolic heart. It doesn't mean they're apostles, but they have an apostolic heart to see the gospel advance and churches established. But having an apostolic heart and being an actual Christ-given fivefold ministry gift of apostle are not the same thing. But every apostle, listen, every apostle needs people who have apostolic hearts to help him. But having an apostolic heart and even serving alongside an apostle doesn't mean you're an apostle. So everyone serving on an apostle's team is not an apostle. If your desire is to help see the church established in places is real strong desire, it could be God's way of providing you direction to develop into a fivefold ministry call, or more likely, it's direction as to where you should be serving in the church or in someone else's ministry. And the point is, you can have an apostolic heart without actually being an apostle. Or many have a prophetic tendency or a prophetic leaning, but that does not make them a prophet. Having a prophetic leaning or tendency in being an actual Christ-given fivefold ministry gift of prophet, they're not the same thing. 
Paul even said that we can all prophesy, but he never said that prophesying made each of us a fivefold ministry gift of prophet. But if you have a leaning toward prophecy or a tendency toward prophecy that's especially strong, it could be God's way of providing you direction as to where you should serve in the church or in someone else's ministry. But having a prophetic tendency or a prophetic leaning does not make you an automatic prophet. Likewise, many have a heart for the lost. Well, should we all have a heart for the lost? But having a heart for the lost and being an actual Christ-given fivefold ministry gift of evangelists are not necessarily equivalent. Each of us should have a heart for the lost. Isn't that correct? Perhaps the anointing of the evangelist is developing in you, yet if your desire to reach the lost is particularly strong, it could simply be God's way of providing you direction as to where you should serve in the church or in someone else's ministry, but having a heart for the lost and being an actual fivefold ministry gift of evangelists, they're not the equivalent. Or many have a heart to help care for others, but having a caring heart and being an actual Christ given fivefold ministry gift of pastor are not equivalent. We should all have caring hearts. But simply having a caring heart does not mean a person stands in the fivefold ministry gift of pastor because we should all have a caring heart for others. It's possible, it's possible that the anointing of a pastor is developing in you. But if your desire to care for others is really strong, it simply could be God's way of saying where you should serve in the church or in someone else's ministry. And lastly, Many people have a heart for teaching the Bible. They love the Bible. They devour the Bible and they love to share insights from the Bible with others. But loving to share the Bible and being an actual Christ-given gift of teacher are not necessarily the same. You can have a heart for teaching without being a five-fold ministry teacher. We should all enjoy sharing the Bible with others. But if your desire to share truth from the Bible is strong, it could be, it could be God's way of showing you that this gift is developing in you, or it could be God's way of showing you where you should serve in the church or in someone else's ministry. But as a result of confusion on all of these matters, people that are apostolic, confusing that with thinking they are apostles, People that have a prophetic leaning, confusing that to mean that they are prophets. People who have a heart for the lost, confusing that to think they are evangelists. Or people who care for others who then self-title themselves as pastors. Or people who love to share insights from the Bible, titling themselves as fivefold ministry teachers. As a result for confusion on all these matters, multitudes of sincere people wrongly think they're called to all kinds of things that they are not called to. <laughs> One example, there are so many people today who claim to be prophets that I don't know how one could possibly keep count of all the people that are self-designated prophets in the body of Christ today. And the majority of them are people who have a leaning or a tendency toward prophetic things, but they've mistakenly taken it to mean they are actual prophets. And I praise God for their sincerity and spiritual desire. But my friends, just having a tendency or a leaning in a direction does not make you a prophet. My friends, this is very important for you and for all of us to understand. But hang on, hang on. If you felt you might be called to one of the two offices of apostle or prophet, if you do believe that's your calling, or if you know somebody who does believe that, it's important for you to know whether or not you or they are on the right track. And the good news is that whether you're one who's called to serve God in the fivefold ministry or not, God has some other call on your life anyhow. God's got something for all of us. And everybody is not called to fivefold ministry. But right now, we're specifically talking about the Christ given gift of apostle. So I want to say the most who incorrectly call themselves apostles or who are incorrectly called apostles by others 
do it simply because they do not know the real meaning of the word apostle. And I ask you again, do you know what is the real meaning of the word apostle? Again, a person may be an innovator. He may be good at successfully pioneering and starting something, but that alone does not qualify a person to be an apostle. And as I told you earlier, it seems the church has gone from one ditch all the way into the other ditch. At one time, the church was in the ditch of not believing in present day apostles at all. And now strangely, it seems that many have jumped into the other ditch of freely calling any pioneering person an apostle simply because he's groundbreaking, innovative or pioneering. But that's not right. That's not right. And when the Apostle Paul wrote his second epistle to the Corinthians, he was deeply concerned about people who were misusing the word apostle and even wrote about how deeply disturbed he was by false apostles who were parading themselves as authentic apostles in the church. The word false apostles are translated from two Greek words, the word saude, which describes that which is fake or that which is phony or that which is bogus. And the second word is the word apostolos, which is the word apostle. When you compound the two words together, a more up-to-date translation of the words false apostles could be pretend apostles or bogus apostles. And in fact, so many people in the first century were pretend apostles or bogus apostles that the early church began to develop a criteria they could use to determine who was a real apostle and who was not. And the same criteria they used is the same criteria we need to use today. But I don't want to accuse anybody falsely. I want to believe that people who call themselves apostles wrongly or who are incorrectly called apostles by others simply do it because they really don't understand what the word apostle means or what an apostle does. And when we come back in the next program, we're going to begin looking into history to see what was the real meaning of of the word apostle. I'll be back in just a moment. These days, a lot of people are being called apostles or prophets, but are real apostles and prophets still alive, well and operating in the body of Christ today? In this much needed, powerful series, Apostles and Prophets, Rick Renner covers what an apostle is and what an apostle is not. What are the signs of a true apostle? Why would anyone claim to be an apostle if he wasn't an apostle? What does the word prophet really mean? What do we know about how real prophets do and do not operate? What about false prophets? This 15 part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $24. And right now, we urge you to get Rick's new book, Apostles and Prophets, their roles in the past, the present, and the last days with over 700 pages of information to help fortify a solid foundation underneath your life for the special introductory price of $30. Joseph Z, founder of Z Ministries and best-selling author says, armed with his Bible, historical examples, and decades of tenured experience, Rick has produced a scholarly masterpiece that will right-size the mania, purge the dysfunction, confront willful ignorance, and cause celebration among the lovers of the Word of God. And Flashpoint host Gene Bailey says, this is not a stuffy manual on how to be an apostle or prophet. You will want to keep this book nearby the next time a question arises on the subject of apostles and prophets. Don't miss this exciting offer, the 15-part series, Apostles and Prophets, and the insightful and penetrating book, Apostles and Prophets. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go on online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and today I am standing in the foyer of Rick Renner Ministries in Tulsa, Oklahoma and I just wish I could pick you up and bring you here to see all the wonderful ministry that is happening in this facility where we receive thousands and thousands of phone calls from people just like you who reach out to us for prayer and for teaching they can trust. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And we know that's our job. Our job is to feed many. And I wanna say thank you to you for everything you've helped us do with your giving. You helped us construct our studio, purchase this building. And now in phase three of our ministry expansion program, we're wanting to pay this facility off so we can liberate all that money to take the teaching of the Bible around the world on additional channels and venues. And by being a part of our giving team, you can really help us make this happen. 
If you're not already a part of our giving team, please pray about joining us. And together we can join hands and through teaching of the Bible and by ministering to people that reach out to us and by sending teaching products around the world, we can really change people's lives. And it's amazing to me that today it's never been easier to make an impact in somebody else's life right from where you are. So thank you for praying about being a part of our giving team. And the moment you join, I want you to really expect the power of God to show up in your life. My friend, I am so glad you've been with me today. We've covered a lot of material and we're just getting started. Please join me again tomorrow when we begin to see what the word apostle really means. But I want you to order the entire series called Apostles and Prophets, Their Roles in the Past, Present, and Last Days Church. And it comes with a wonderful study guide so that you can read all the information while you're seeing it or while you're hearing it. And we're offering you right now my book by the same title. This really is the go-to book on the subject of apostles and prophets. It gives you an intellectual view, a historical view, a spiritual view, a biblical view. We need a really strong foundation on this subject because today there's a lot of confusion in the body of Christ about who is an apostle and who is a prophet. And as a result, there are a lot of bogus pretend apostles and prophets And they're very sincere. They just don't really understand what an apostle and a prophet is. So we need to understand so that we can embrace those who really are. And that's why I've written this book that I want you to have. And by the way, you can order all these things by reaching out to us. Just call us or go online, my friend, and also let us know how to pray for you. And I want to pray for you right now. Father, we thank you for the amazing word of God that brings clarity to every subject. And Lord, we're living in the last days and we need clarity on the subject of apostles and prophets. So Holy Spirit, we ask you in these days to open these scriptures to us so that we can understand what is the ministry of an apostle and a prophet in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow, but remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, it says where the word of a king is, there is power. Hey friends, we're coming to an area near you and we want to invite you to come to one of our meetings. Sunday, February 5th, we're going to Church for All Nations in Colorado Springs and we will be with pastors Mark and Linda Coward. Then on Sunday, February 12th, we're going to be at Legacy Church with Pastor Jeremy and Sarah Pearsons in Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. Then on Thursday, February 16th, Denise is having a women's meeting at the Stony Creek Hotel in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. On Saturday and Sunday, February 18th and 19th, we're going to be at the Living Word Christian Center with Pastor Mac Hammond in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. And on Sunday, February 26th, we're going to be at Faith Family Church with Pastors Michael and Vicki Bang in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. But please go to our website to affirm all these times and all these dates, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.